Uh, there we go. We are live, my love. Okay. I I have noticed something within the human, you know, psyche that people don't fear the Lord anymore. They really don't. And 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 you see it through their actions. They're very mean spirited. They don't care. The loyalty is absolutely dead in in mankind, in their hearts. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, a bunch of people claim they are believers in Jesus Christ, but it's like, do you fear him? Do you feel that you're there's going to be consequences to your bad actions to how your heart is and how you treat your fellow man you don't think there's not going to be any consequences to that in your afterlife because there is that's the main thing why jesus came here and died is 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 because of our lack of love for each other our lack of caring for our fellow man. That's why he came here. And now I'm seeing mankind go down the same route anymore. Like, the Christian behavior really needs to change right now because your hearts are not showing Christ. It's showing the other guy. It's showing Lucifer. Yeah, and it's all, most Christians get all riled up over these weird social issues and, and it's not about love it's not about taking care of people which is what Jesus said it's it's about what's the next hot button issue and we can debate about that and get all mad about it and that's Christianity now and that's not what Christianity was supposed to be it was to love others yeah that's that's as simple as I could possibly put it is love yeah. If you love, you're following the law of God. You're following the law of Christ if you love. Yeah. And it seems now Christians haven't even put that into perspective that love is needed in order to be within Christ. Well, they're very politicized. That like, Everything is politicized now and, and made, well, if you believe this way, then you're not, you can't be Christian. Which is nuts. See, but that's the trick of Lucifer. Yeah. Divine Contra. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what's been going on with mankind, is they just want to tear each other up. They think it's funny. They think it's fun. Mm -hmm. They... They find that it's a way how they can sustain themselves. And... I'm 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 just asking you as a Christian, uh, where do you think you're gonna go at the end of your life, when you gotta face Christ and you have to answer to your words of hatred toward your fellow man? Where are you gonna go with that, man? Like me, I I'm repented of that behavior, and if I did do that behavior. By mistake, I, 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 I sure I'd be quick to apologize and say sorry to the Lord for that. You know, because the flare of temper does happen. But there comes a point where you have to try to have some self-control in how you put your feelings and your thoughts and your intentions out there in the world. You got to have some self-control. And I think that's something that the body of Christ is lacking lately, is self-control. And that's a fruit of the Spirit. Where's your fruit of the Spirit if you have no self-control? Are you telling me you can't see someone and, and have compassion and empathy in your heart? You can't do that? Instead, it's like, ah, oh, let, let's make fun of them. 
let's kick them while they're down. Uh, well, all you're doing is when I'm seeing you do that is you have no fear of the Lord in you. You have no wisdom. You're, you're just noise, just doing whatever the breeze tells you to do. You certainly ain't, you, you certainly ain't, you know, listening to the Lord or his words of wisdom. You're not listening to Paul. You're, you're, you're not listening to John. You're not listening to Solomon. You're not listening to David. You're not listening to Moses. You're not listening to Abraham. You're not listening to any of those leaders that are within our faith. Because you chose that your thoughts, your opinions, your feelings are way more important than the other person. You have to tell that person off. I get it. There's plenty of people in my life that I have told off. But I have learned within my age, I have learned within my weakness in my body that it's not worth it at the end of the day. All those words meant to put someone down doesn't do anything. Ah, where's the Lord? Where's the Lord in your heart? That's what I truly wonder is where is the Lord in your heart? How, you know, every single time you say something bad about someone or you talk ill about someone or, or you try to hurt someone or you do something that's sneaky and maniacal to someone, you know what you're essentially doing? You're taking that cat of nine tails and striping Christ's back because that's the sin that you chose to do to stripe Christ with because he took all our sins for himself. So every single time you think you're getting someone, you're actually getting Christ. And a little something I should add from my background of studying the Bible enough that like I, I got the Greek in my mind and everything. The word for fear actually, when you see it, and, and it's the same way with the Hebrew. It's not just fear like, oh, I'm scared of you. It's reverence. It's yes. respect. It's respectful. It's respect. Reverence. Yes. Respect. It's respect. Exactly. How are you respecting the Lord if you're hitting him all the time by hitting your fellow man? Right. How are you doing that? Exactly. You don't respect the Lord if you're going to go and try to take someone down. I hear I hear certain Christians say, I've got to destroy this person. Really? Because out of your mouth, you're saying you're going to destroy Christ, essentially. Because whatever you do to the least of these, you do unto him. Whatever you do, it could, it could be the, a murderer, and you're talking ill crap to them. You're hitting Jesus, and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely the truth. But it's it's the the way the way Chuck Missler always described the definition is off filled reverence. Mm -hmm. Now it's not fear like oh my God you're gonna kill me oh my God. not that kind of fear that's how we understand the word fear as humans yeah oh my God what is gonna it's not that no it's wow you're amazing it's that fear you could take me <laughs> out if you wanted to Lord but you don't but you your don't. mercy exactly yeah. And you have respect for him for that. Yes. Like, why? Why? Why me? Like, why you talk to me? Like, why do you love me? You're this God. You're God. Why do you care about me? It's that kind of feeling. And it's because God made you. That's why he loves you. Yes. He knitted you together. He made your DNA. And what do you do to thank him? You, you bash your fellow man. And Jesus told you not to. Jesus told you even when an enemy comes at you, you turn your cheek. You're never to engage in any kind of malice at all. That's what Christ said. 
So if you're you're in the political arena and 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 you're on YouTube and comments and hating on people, you really got to think about what you're doing if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian and you're debating people, it says straight in Romans 1, that's a reprobate action. Why are you doing it? Do you think you're going to impress some atheist because you debated someone? You're not going to get any Jesus po brownie points from him because he said it's reprobate. In fact, Paul said don't do it. Paul said it, and he used to he used to do it all the time as debate. And he realized, oh, I'm being a reprobate. And I got him put in jail. <laughs> when you read Romans, you have to understand that Paul has been jailed for the stuff that he had been doing, which is bra it was bringing the gospel, yes, but it put him in jail. And and debating with people is mainly what put him behind bars. So, of course he's going to feel that way. It is a reprobate action. Because it's just for your own glory. Debates for your own glory. Yep. And that's why it's not Christian. <laughs> you ain't putting reverence into God. It's Christ. for it's for your mind to feel like, ah, I'm better yes. than this person. I yes. know more than this person. It's Calvinism. Yeah. It's vanity in its finest. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have all these yeah. other so-called anointed authors in history that the and it's on our side, on the Protestant side, it's a bunch of Calvinists. And it's like, oh well, we should read Kierkegaard and all of these. Why? You don't need that shit. It's literally Paul told you it's vanity and stupidity to be to be um, completely engrossed in philosophical stuff is vanity. It, it accomplishes nothing. It's for your own ego. So enough of it. Just drop it because it's not Christian. No, <laughs> it's not. You you say you're Christian and what do you, what do you, what are you doing? You're you're going on gossip channels. Yeah. Gossipers don't inherit the kingdom of God. What are you doing? Gossipers were thrown out of the church completely. What are you doing? You say you love Christ and yet you're doing something he hates? It, it says in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 and 19, that, that God hates those who sow discord among brethren. There you go. He hates your actions when you do that. He hates you for it. But yet you're doing it. You think it's okay. Let's go to a gossip channel. Let's go to a reaction channel. Let's let's see the latest tea on, on, on how someone can be knocked down. And let's laugh about it. And then pretend that we actually love Christ when really all we did was put a bunch of stripes on his back. Yeah. I hate to say it, but a lot of Christians are very abusive toward Christ because of their actions. Hey, you're right. You're right. He knew they would be, but the point is, is that you shouldn't be. <laughs> no! Don't you have enough wisdom and love for Jesus in your heart where you would stop these repulsive actions that he hates? Yeah, they're actually... That hurts him? They're actually mocking the Lord. They are. Because they're doing the things exactly opposite of what he said to do to others. Which, which tells me I think they're on the other team, but that's another... And then they stand almighty. Oh, look, we're, we believe in Jesus. No. Nah, be I believe dude. in Jesus. Do you? I'm a Christian. Yeah. Really, your actions say you don't. Mm-hmm. Your actions say that you love Lucifer and you're you're part of the one third of the angels that are meant to sent to destroy God and his people. Yeah, and for certain ones of them, they'd be the ones that Paul threw out. Yeah. I'm just saying, if they were in that church, nope. <laughs> he would not allow them to be there. No. So. No. You know, there, there, there's... <laughs> a method and a way how to talk to people where you don't have to be so inflammatory. Yeah. And every issue is the end of the world and it's like, it's got to be this way and not that way and that's the way it is and I won't, I won't even talk to you if you feel differently. You can't be that way as a Christian. You can't. No. You can't be that way.
You need to be all people. You need to be every man to each individual man. That's what Paul said. You go to Rome, you'd be as a Roman. You go to Greece, you'd be as a Grecian. That's you do as the Greeks. Jesus commanded us to love others as ourselves, mm -hmm. to look at other people as ourselves. Yes. Exactly. You wouldn't hurt yourself, so why are you hurting another individual? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't like the behavior that you do unto other people done unto you, so why are you doing it? How are you showing Christ's love? You're not. not. You're not. And it, 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 it's time the body of Christ matures and wakes up from their infancy. And, and, and realize that this immaturity in, in, in your faith and, and walking around being a scumbag to others while saying you love Jesus, it doesn't fly with him. And it's not going to fly with him. That's why I had to stop certain behaviors of my own because I realized, oh man, I'm not loving Christ the way I should be loving Christ. I'm hurting him, in fact. Same here. The same here. When you when you get in those modes and it's like you you want to lash out, that's when you, the Holy Spirit, if you got it, is going to go, no, that's not the way you should be acting. But sometimes we do. We're human still. Yeah. But, but if you're intentionally seeking out people and habitually, yeah, and habitually doing it, mm -hmm. there's a big problem because you came from doing a sin to becoming a sinner, right? And this is what Jesus said about going to your brother that that has ought with you. Yeah, you try it three times with witnesses and all that stuff, and if it doesn't work, you just say, "Go with, I'm done," you know. We try to sort it out. You leave that person alone. Yeah, you let them live their lives. It says <laughs> straight in um, Revelation 22, let the wicked be wicked. Let the unjust be unjust. Right. And it's not because it's like, ah, they're, they're the wicked, they're the unjust. Why leave them there? They're just going to hurt more people. It's because if you let them in that behavior, eventually they're going to destroy themselves to the point where they'll have no choice but to turn back to Christ. That's right. That's very well put. Yeah. Once they're at the bottom of the barrel of that activity, they come right back to him. And it always happens that way. Yeah. Carlos uh, Santana, actually. Carlos Santana? Yeah, what are the, you talking the about? Guitar, the guitar. He said that? He said, I've been a Satanist. I've been a Jew. I've been an Arab. I've been a Hindu, I've been a Hindi, I've been everything. And at the end, I came back to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because Jesus has all those aspects and all those other religions and more. And the power. Uh, and the especially power. the power. The power is in Jesus' name. It just is. I got chills. True. This is so good. Thank you for doing this. I got chills. Welcome. Like, I want my brothers and sisters in Christ to get better because you guys are sick. You're sick with the um, the leaven of the Pharisees. Which is the world. Yeah. They're sick with the world's stuff. Yeah, you're sick with the leaven of the Pharisees. And, like, there's got to be a point where you realize, shoot, I have all this leaven in me. I got to get this out. And the only way how to flush out leaven... Well... Well... I was going to say what? water. Yes, that's true too. Okay. AKA Jesus Christ is the living water. That's right. Amen. Flush Amen. the leaven out and fill yourself up with Jesus. Yes. Instead of filling yourself up with all this hatred and petty nonsense that's doing nothing but keeping you miserable. Amen. You want to be miserable for the rest of your life? Continue in the behavior that's causing you to stay miserable. If you want to find joy, come to Christ. Start loving others and sharing his love and joy that he imparted onto mankind with his Holy Spirit. Your choice.
Peace and Maranatha, guys. If you like this video, please thumb on it. Um, if you would like to support us, yeah, which we actually, we desperately need that right now, food-wise and everything else, guys, okay? So if you want to help us out, I, I'm going to say, okay, it, I'll say Shani's PayPal. It, Shani's PayPal is at Shani Needs Love, and, my, and uh, her cash app is cash tag Shani Dorn. Yes. So if you want to help us out, that's where to help us, and we really do need it right now. But if not, that's okay, too. It all depends on if the Lord touches your heart to do so. Of course. Yeah. Um, but you guys stay strong. Love your fellow man. Do what Jesus tells you to do and not what man's trying to uh, peer pressure you into do. And that's to hate your fellow man. And that, that comes from Satan. And I don't think you should be uh, abiding into Satan's law. You should be abiding into Christ's law. Bye, guys. I love you. Take care. Take care and love. Do something nice for someone.